Okay, chapter 11 is on sequences and series. Um, there's two types. There's arithmetic and geometric. So before we get started, I want to talk about the difference in those. So arithmetic. Arithmetic means you have to either add or subtract to get to the next number. Geometric means you have to multiply or divide to get to the next number. But typically, we're going to use multiplying. Uh, and if the number gets smaller, we're going to multiply by a fraction. So another thing about arithmetic versus geometric uh, arithmetic has a common difference in the formula it's D and geometric has a common ratio and in the formula that's R so the difference between a sequence and a series is a sequence is just a list a series is where you're going to add up a certain amount of numbers within that list so a series is a sum and you can tell the difference in the formula between a sequence and a series because uh, your series have S's on them so these ones are sums that means we're going to add up numbers within that list. Um, so again, just to remind you, uh, arithmetic has a D in it, and then uh, geometric has an R in it. So that's how you can tell the difference. Okay. So explicit formulas, they come straight off the formula sheet, but before you can uh, write an explicit formula, you have to decide which type it is. So if you look at this first one, it looks like to get to the next number in the list, they're going to times 3. And it looks like that pattern holds true all the way through. So since it's multiply, that tells me that it's a geometric series. So in a geometric series, or a sequence I should say, uh, all you need is the first term. So this is my first term, so that's A1. And then R. R is going to equal 3. So when we plug this into the formula, it's going to say... A sub N is equal to the first term, which is 3, multiplied by the R, and the R is also 3. And then we're going to have N minus 1 at the top. And that's our formula. Okay, next one. The list goes 1, 5, uh, 9, 13, 17. So it looks like it's plus 4, plus 4, plus 4, plus 4. And... Since the pattern holds true all the way through and it's plus, this is going to be an arithmetic sequence or arithmetic, however you want to pronounce it. In an arithmetic sequence, you need the first term, so that's A1, and this right here is D. So according to that formula, A sub N is going to equal the first term, which is 1, plus the common difference, which is 4, and then you put N minus 1 right here. Now, since they're asking for the um, explicit, we want to actually simplify this. So to simplify, we just distribute. So it gives you 4n minus 4. That's positive, and you have the 1, and then you combine like terms. So ultimately, this answer is going to say a sub n equals 4n minus 3. That's our answer. Okay, the next one. Uh, this one looks like it's probably going down and it looks like it's going down by five every single time so it's minus five minus five minus five and so on so again that's going to be uh, arithmetic and this is my a1 so according to the formula it's a sub one, uh, n equals the first term which is 12 now usually we put a plus here but since d is uh, negative i'm going to put minus five and then n minus one then again we're going to simplify this so we're going to have negative 5n plus 5 with a 12 right here. So a sub n is going to equal uh, 17 minus 5n. Now the order of this doesn't matter. You can put negative 5n plus 17 and it means the same exact thing. Okay, describe the type. So we don't have to do anything else besides describe the type. There's only two types. It's either arithmetic or geometric. So it looks like to get from here to here, they did a plus 4. To get from here to here is plus 4, here to here is plus 4, here to here is plus 4. So that means that it's arithmetic. This one, it looks like it's plus 6, plus 6, and plus 6. That's arithmetic also. So again, the pattern has to hold true all the way through. If that number changes at all, then it's not going to be arithmetic. Okay, next one. Uh, let's see what we got here. This looks like it's times 3 times 3, times 3, and times 3. So that makes it a geometric sequence. And then this one, if you notice the, the zeros here, 
this is actually going to be multiplied by one tenth. Now, how is it that I'm finding these numbers? You can actually do this in the calculator. So to find out what these numbers are, all you do is you take this number and divide it by this number. So I'm going to take 0 0.04 and divide by, divide by 0.4. So when you're doing this, um, 0.1 is the same as 1 tenth, so I just use 1 tenth. You can use 0.1 also, it doesn't really matter. The, the trick to this, though, is you have to use next door neighbors. So I would use the point zero 0.04. So point actually zero zero 0.004 divided by point zero 0.04. See, and it doesn't matter which pair of next door neighbors we use. Uh, it gives us the same answer all the way through. It's all point one, so that's going to be a geometric sequence. Uh, this says find the sum. Sum means that we have to do a series. And when it says the first 10, the first 10 means uh, n. So let's see what we got here. Um, in order to find the series, or yeah, the series, we have to make sure that we know what type of problem that we're working with. So this looks like, um, this looks like the one that we just did. To get from here to here is times 3. Here to here is times 3. Here to here is times 3. And then here to here is times 3. So right there, that tells me it's geo. So we've got to use the geometric series formula. In order to use this formula, uh, we're going to add up the first 10 numbers. So it's going to be the first number, which is 2. 2 parentheses. 1 minus r. R is actually that 3 that we found, so it's going to be 3. And then it's to the 10th power. And then down at the bottom, it's going to be 1 minus 3. Now, if, if R was negative, we'd have to use parentheses around this. And then now, it's just all calculator work. So we've got 2 parentheses, fraction, 1 minus 3. And I'm not putting the parentheses since it's a positive that we plugged in to the tenth power and then down at the bottom we'll have one minus three oops I need to put those parentheses on the outside right here parentheses so the answer to this one is going to be fifty nine thousand forty eight okay next this, this problem here it looks like um, these are the ones that we did in the in the previous problems. This one right here, it appears that this right here is minus 5. And that's the pattern all the way through, so that's D. Now here's the thing about this problem, though. We're going to have to break up this problem into two parts. This is arithmetic because it's subtracting 5 all the way through. And in order to find a series, we have to know the tenth number. So to know the tenth number, we actually have to use this formula first. So to find the tenth number, it's going to be the first number and then 10 minus 1 inside of there. So 12 minus 5, parentheses, 10 minus 1. So the tenth number in that list would be negative 33. So we're going to have to use that in this spot right here. So now we can do the tenth number, so part two, is the sum of the ten numbers is equal to ten divided by two, and then the first number, which is twelve, and then we're going to add the tenth number, which is negative thirty-three, and then that all goes into the calculator. So, hang on a second, let's clear all this. So we got ten divided by two. And if you want, you can, I mean, you could just put 5 right there, but I'm trying to make it look exactly like the formula. 12, if my buttons work, 12 plus negative 33. And again, you can just put 12 minus 33 if you choose to. So this answer right here is negative 105. Okay, last one on this page. Uh, this one looks like it's times 3 times 3, so that's a geo 
sequence. And we're going to do the series. So we need the first number. So S of n. Actually, that's not S of n. That's going to be S of 10, since we're doing the sum of the first 10. It's going to be the first number. And we have 1 minus r, which is 3, to the 10th power. This is 1 minus 3. So um, here we go. Calculator time. 3 parentheses ABC 1 minus 3 and again I'm not using those parentheses since it's a positive that we plugged in putting that to the 10th power and then down at the bottom we have 1 minus 3 and we close the parentheses and it's 88,572 that's our answer Okay, next, write the uh, first three terms by the sequence defined by that. So this right here, uh, the first term is easy. They always give it to you. This is a recursive formula, and you can tell it's recursive because it's the little n minus 1 part, part. So the first number is 1. So what the recursive formula says is this piece right here means the last number. So the last number, the last answer that we had. So we're going to do 4 parentheses minus 2. The last number is 1. So 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 take away 2 is 2. So that means the second number is 2. And we do it again. 4 parentheses minus 2. And we put in the last number. The last number was 2. So 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 take away 2 is 6. So that means the third number is just 6. These are answers. Okay, same thing. Uh, this right here is the last number. So we know the first number. It's 5. So if I want to find the second number, I'm going to do 2 parentheses minus 1. And I'm putting in the previous number, which is 5. So I'll put a 5 in here. 10 take away 1 is 9. So that means the second number is 9. Then we do the formula again. 2 parentheses minus 1. And the last number that we had was 9. So we put the 9 in here. And 18 take away 1 is 17. So that means the third number in the list is 17. Those are answers. That, by the way, is not a negative. That was just me pointing at the 5. Okay, determine the type of sequence, then state the common difference or the common ratio. So if these numbers are growing uh, in a way that is kind of quick, like through multiplication, that's going to be geometric. And if they're growing through addition, then that's going to be arithmetic. So what the heck? We've got fractions. So what I would do is I would look at the ones that are not fractions. So from here to here, it looks like times 3. From here to here, it looks like times 3. So just to be sure, I'm going to check if 2 ninths, 2 ninths times 3 actually gets me to 2 thirds. And it does. So that means that this is geometric. That was the ugliest thing I've ever written, geometric. And geometric has an R, and R is the 3. We multiply by 3 to get to the next term. Now, technically, what we should have done, we should have taken 2 thirds divided by 2 ninths, 2 divided by 2 thirds, 6 divided by 2, and then 18 divided by 6 to get R. Okay, next, uh, this looks like it's going up by plus 8, plus 8, plus 8, plus 8. Now, you're probably wondering why am I doing the plus 8 all the way through, it's because the pattern has to hold through uh, all the way. So if I had a plus 8, plus 8, plus 7, then that's not arithmetic. So this one is arithmetic, and D is 8. Okay, next one. This one is shrinking, so it either has to be subtraction or division. I'm going to go with division. And remember, we talked about division uh, in class. Division is the same as multiplying, so we're going to multiply this by a half. Multiply that by a half. Multiply that by a half, so that makes it geometric, and this r is going to equal one half. Okay, next one looks like it's going up by three, and it's going up by three again, and it's going up by three again, so that makes it arithmetic, and d is three. Okay, given the sequence, find this right here means find the seventeenth number in the list. So first, is it arithmetic or geometric? So from here to here. It looks like it's going down by one half. From here to here, it's going down by one half. And from here to here, it's going down by 
one half. So since it's going down by half, uh, we have to subtract. So that makes this arithmetic. So an arithmetic sequence, if I want to find the 17th number, I'm going to use the first number, which is right here. So I'm going to use one. Then it says to add the common difference. This right here is D. So it's going to be minus one half. And I want the 17th number. So it's going to be 17 minus one. And that all goes in the calculator. We got one minus one half, and then parentheses seventeen minus one. So the answer is negative seven. The seventeenth number in the list is negative seven. Now, what is it that I'm looking for? I'm just looking for this. You don't have to put the a sub seventeen at the bottom. Okay, next. Let's see. This one looks a little fancier, so. If you notice, there's a top and a bottom to it, and you might not see the bottom for at first, but if I put this over 1, the top looks like it's going times 2, and the bottom looks like it's going times 3. So that means that R, that means this is geometric, and it means R is 2 thirds. So if I want to find the 15th number in the list, I go to my geometric sequence. So I'm going to use this formula here. I need to know the first number, which is right here, so it's 4. R is two thirds, and I'm going to find the 17th number, so it's going to be 17 minus 1 for the exponent. So four parentheses, two thirds to the 17 minus 1. Now, this thing right here. Um, this E is scientific notation, so it's saying move the decimal left three places, but if you just hit the FD button, which is right above the 8, it should maybe change that into a fraction, but it's not, of course. Why would it? So we're just going to leave this one as a decimal. All that means is that the bottom number of this fraction is super, super big. So I'm going to just change this. I forgot what the fraction said. It's uh, 0.6. I'm going to write this down. 6.0896. 0, 0.089, and it was e to the negative 3, so that means we have to take this and move it three places to the left, so it's 0. 0, 0.006, and then the rest are insignificant because we only go three numbers anyways. Okay, next one, same type of thing here. Let's move this down so I can see the formulas. So if you haven't noticed the pattern yet, you've got to figure out what type it is. Now, in this one, uh, you'll notice this is minus, this is positive, this is minus. So when you get alternating signs like that, usually it's going to be a multiplication. So I'm, I'm thinking it's geometric. And it looks like from 11 to 22, 22 to 44, 44 to 88 is times 2. So that means R is equal to 2. So here's the first number. We have to multiply that by R, which is 2. And we're going to do 13 minus 1 because we're trying to find the 13th number. Now this goes into the calculator. Negative 11 times 2 to the 13 minus 1. And I know, again, you're thinking, why don't I just type in 12? I'm just trying to make it look exactly like the formula. So I got negative 45,056. Negative 45,056. That's going to be the 13th number in that list. Okay, recursive rules. So the big thing about a recursive rule is you got to have a couple parts to them. So you got to have a part that says a sub n minus 1, and then you also have to tell me where to start from. So that's our basic formula. Now, depending on what type of formula it is, if it's arithmetic, we're just going to add the common difference. But if it's geometric, geometric is multiply, so we're just multiply by r. So it just depends on what type it is. But no matter what, you always follow that format. So without even looking at the problem, I can start off like this. And then I know my first term already is 3. Now we've seen this one already. This is times 3. So that means it's R, and R just goes in the front. So we put 3 in front, and there's our answer. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. The next one says, uh, given this formula, and here's the first number, write an explicit formula. So the fact that this right here says plus 2, that's D. So that means it's arithmetic. So if they want the explicit, we have to use the arithmetic sequence formula. So we know A sub 1. A sub 1 is going to be 2. 
And then we know the common difference is going to be 2 again, and then we're going to do n minus 1. And the explicit formula, we're going to have to simplify this, so it's 2n minus 2, with, oops, i got to go back there, so plus, and then we combine like terms, so it's just 2n. So a sub n equals 2 times n. Okay, so we've got next. Uh, write the explicit formula for this one. So you can see this right here is being multiplied. So that right there tells me right away that it's R. So R is a geometric sequence. A sub 1 is 3, so it's 3 times the R, which is also 3. And then it's going to just be n minus 1. And geometric sequences, they can't be simplified, so we just leave it like that. So that's our answer. Okay, recursive. So again, recursive, you got to have this part, you got to have n minus 1, and then you got to tell me where to start from. So right here, this part right here gives it away, and it even says it's geometric. So a geometric sequence, we got a sub n, we'll put the r in front and multiply that by a sub n minus 1, and then we say to start from 5. Okay, next one, uh, recursive rule. This is arithmetic, and it also has D right here, so the basic format starts off like this. And since it's arithmetic, we're going to add the common difference, which is negative 3, and then we're going to tell everyone to start from 7. Pretty easy stuff. Okay, next, Hector tra uh, started to train for a triathlon. The table shows the number of miles Hector ran during each of the first three weeks after he began training. So let's see what we've got down here. So what type of sequence is this? From here to here is plus 5. From here to here is plus 5. So this looks like it's an arithmetic sequence. It says write the recursive formula and the explicit. Okay, so I'll do the recursive first. a sub n equals a sub n minus 1. Common difference is plus 5. And we're going to start week 1 at 10 miles. Okay, now recursive is easy that was the recursive now we're going to move on to the explicit in the explicit formula we're just going to plug in a1 plug in the d and then we're going to simplify that so a1 is 10 common difference is 5 we got n minus 1 and then we distribute so we got 5n minus 5 e, uh, plus i know i keep putting an equal sign and then we combine like terms there so we've got 5n plus 5 a sub n. There's our answers for each part. Okay, a veterinarian prescribes your dog 1,000 milligrams of a specific antibiotic. However, each day it's cut in half. So if we got it cut in half each day, half of something is multiply. So we're going to multiply by one half, which basically means that's R, so it's geometric. Part B says, what's the total amount? Now right here, total amount it's not asking you how much you're going to give them on the seventh day. It's going to ask how much you've given them over the course of seven days. So we're going to have to um, add up all the amounts. So we're using the geometric series. So the first number is 1,000. 1 minus R. R is 1 half. And that's going to be raised to the seventh power since we're doing seven days. And then we at the bottom we have 1 minus 1 half. So... Over here, we're going to go in here. Let me clear this out so it's not so messy. Delete it all. Delete it all, I think. Delete, delete. What am I doing? Delete it all. Yes. Okay. So we have 1,000 milligrams. ABC, 1 minus. Now, you could, you got to be careful with this 1 half. You have to put the 1 half in parentheses, but I know 1 half is just 0.5, so I'm just going to use 0.5 instead. And that's going to go to the seventh power. I'm not using parentheses on the 0.5 because it's not negative. And then down at the bottom, we have the same thing, 1 minus 0.5. And then, bam. So the total amount of medicine that this dog has taken is 1,984 point, let's see, does it say to round it or anything? It does not. I'm just going to round it to the nearest. I'm not going to put that up. I'm going to take this over. So 1,984 grams, 1,984, is it grams or milligrams? I forgot. Milligrams, yeah. Perfect. Okay, patient takes 400 milligrams of the supplement. One-third remains in the body. How much of the body, how much of the supplement remains after the 21st dose? 
So again, if you have one third each day, that's R. Um, so we're using the sum again. Hold on a second, how much of the supplement remains? Just kidding, we're not using the sum because it doesn't ask for the total. So they want to know how much is going to be in the body uh, at the end of the 21st day. So we're going to use the geometric sequence. So the first amount is 400. And we've got the one third. And we're going to do this for 21 days. So it's 21 take away one. So we've got 400. So again, we're using this formula because we're not, we don't want to know how much is taken after 21 days. We want to know how much there is left after 21 days. So there's a difference there. So I can put the one third in the parentheses here and then raise it to the 20, 21 minus one power, which is basically 20. And again, I don't think this is going to let me change. Yeah, it's, we're going to have to just leave it as a decimal. So that's a little amount. Well, I got 1.147, and it was e to the negative 7. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, which gives us six zeros. And then one, point, uh, one not point anymore, because the point's right here. And that's how much is left. And that looks like milligrams again. Okay, here we go. I just want to make sure I'm reading this right. Uh -huh. Approximately remains in the body at the end of the day. How much the supplement? Yeah, we're good. Okay, number 28. Game show host offers to give you one penny for the first day. Now, here's when over the last few years that we've given this test, everyone always messes up because for one penny, they just put one. You guys have to know how money works. One penny is 0 0.01. So you, you got to pay attention to that. Day two, now you got two pennies. Day, uh, where am I? Uh, four pennies on the third day, so 0 0.04. Now I'm just writing this down so you can see that this is a geometric series. It's being doubled. Anytime you double something, that's geo. Okay? It says how much money you're going to have at the end of two weeks. So at the end of two weeks, you're going to have, that's two weeks is 14 days. So 14 days, that's N. And they want to know how much money you're going to have at the end. They're not asking you how much they're going to give you. They want to know the total amount. So we're going to have to use the sum, which is geometric series. So the first amount is one penny. Then we're going to do one minus, and we're doubling it. And we are going to do this for 14 days. So on the bottom, it's one minus two. We go into the calculator, it's one penny. And then parentheses, ABC, one minus two to the 14th power, since we're doing that for 14 days, one minus two. And then we close the parentheses. So we'd have $163.83. Now, if you didn't put this 0 0.01 here, and this is what people did on the test, they, they're saying that it was $16,383. But you still have to divide that by 100 because, you know, you didn't put the decimal. So you got to be careful with that. So it says the same host gives you a choice to take the first scenario or just take $200. Um, I think it's better to take $200 because $200 is more. And I'm not going to write all that. You heard it, so... Okay, another problem, very similar. So let's see what we've got here. Game show, they're going to give you uh, first day of the month, three pennies. Second day, five pennies. So on day one, you got three pennies. On day two, you have five pennies. And so on. So it looks like this one is adding two pennies every day. And is it geometric or arithmetic? So since we're adding, it's going to be arithmetic. And then we're going to have to find out how much money we have. 30 days in the month, how much money are you going to have? So let's see what we got here. Um, we want to know how much we're going to have all together, so we're going to do the series again. Now, in order to do this, we need to know how much we're going to have after 30 days, which means we actually have to start with this one. So the first day, we're going to have three pennies plus... So two pennies 
And we're going to do this for 30 days. So it's 30 minus 1. Then that all goes in the calculator. Move this over. So 3 pennies plus 2 pennies. And then 30 minus 1. So we're going to get 61 cents on that 30th day. Now, it doesn't mean that's how much we're going to have total. We have to add up all those pennies for those 30 days. So now we find the sum. The sum for 30 days is going to be 30 divided by 2. And then we've got the first amount, which is 2 pennies, no, 3 pennies. And then we're going to add the 61 pennies to it. So then that goes in the calculator. So a fraction, 30 over 2. And then we've got 3 pennies plus the 61 pennies on the 30th day. And that's going to be $9.60. So the host says, take that or take $10. Well, obviously, it's going to be better to take $10. Now, why is it that they're asking you this question? Because they're counting on you using a 3 here instead of 0 .03 and a 61 here instead of 0 .61. So when you, when you do that, it's going to look like you got like $9,000, uh, and that's not the case, or $900. Okay. And we're trying to drill this point home because everyone always misses this question. So let's see, one penny on the first day, two on the second day, Four on the third day, so this is geo. It's being doubled. How much you're going to have in 25 days? So we're using this formula. So in the first day, you've got one penny, and it's one minus two. We're going to do this for 25 days, and then one minus two at the bottom. So one penny, ABC. We're doubling it, so R is two. We do this for 25 days, and down at the bottom, we've got 1 minus 2. Close that. So this is the money amount, 335,000, can't remember all that, 335,000, $544.31. So it says the game show host offers you a choice. Take that scenario or take 300000 Well, if it's up to me, I would take this. This is more than 300000 Okay, here's some more review. So find the first three. So the first three, uh, we know the first one. It's two. So this is two times the last number plus three. Last number is two. So two times two is four. Four plus three is seven. Second number is seven. And then we do it again, 2 times the last number plus 3. Last number was 7. So 14 plus 3, 17. There's our first 3. Okay, next one, first number is 3. This one says the last number minus 5. So 3 take away 5 means the second number is negative 2. And then subtract 5 again, so negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. So third number is negative 7. Uh, first number is 4. So this is negative 2 times the last number minus 1. So we're going to plug in that 4. That's negative 8 minus 1, so that's negative 9. Second number is negative 9. And then we do the formula again. And we plug in the negative 9. So that's 18 take away 1. So that means the third number is 17. And then the last one on here, uh, first number is five, negative five. So the last number plus six, so negative five plus six is one. And then last number plus six, one plus six is seven. There's our first three. And finally, review. So in the review questions, um, these are like the log type questions. Um, the goal here is to turn this into a nine. But if I do 9 squared, that's already 81, so I've already gone over. So it, 
I can't make it into a 27. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the 9 into a 3 squared. And if it adds stuff up there, I put it back in parentheses. 27 is 3 to the third, and I put the x minus 2 back in parentheses. And since the base is matched, we don't need to worry about those anymore. So this is just 2x equals 3x minus 6. Subtract 3x. Oops, not 36, 3x. That's a negative x equals a negative 6. Divide by negative 1. So x equals 6. And if you want, you can go plug this stuff in and make sure in the calculator that this is a true statement. So what happens if you can't turn it into a 7 or into the other number? Uh, 7 can't change either, so at this point we've got to change forms. So we have got to turn this into a log. So in the log problems, the base is 7, so that goes down here, and then these two just flip-flop. So it's log base 7 of 10 is equal to x minus 1. So now we can solve for the x by adding 1 to both sides. So this is log base 7 of 10 plus 1. So that's not going to give you 11 because 10 is inside of the log, and now this is all just calculator work. Hopefully I remember how to find the log stuff. So let's see what we've got here. Here it is. Log base 7 of 10. And then we're going to add 1 to that. And it's going to be a decimal most likely. Yep. 2.183. And I like going three numbers. So it just depends on your teacher. And then finally, the last one says to simplify. This is all just factor and cancel type stuff. So top one looks like a simple ABC. Two numbers that multiply to 30 and add to 1. So I think it's 6 and 5. And let's see, it's got to be a negative. So that makes it a negative 6 and a plus 5. And at the bottom, you have a GCF of 2. So my restrictions here, it's supposed to be an R. My restrictions, x cannot equal negative 5. So x, uh, negative 5 isn't in the domain. So now that we've got the restrictions, we can cancel this. So the final answer is just x minus 6 over 2. Now, with the exception of that review part, I mean, this is a calculator test. You just got to know which formulas to use. So hopefully um, this review video helps with that.